All right, we've got part C now. So Caker Limited purchased factory equipment with an invoice price of 75,000 on the 1st of April 2015. Now, in these sorts of questions, dates are very important. So make sure you pay attention to your dates because these usually go over a couple of periods. Other costs incurred at the time of purchase were freight costs of 1,000, installation and wiring of 2,500, material and labour costs in testing the equipment of 750, oil lubricants and supplies to be used with the equipment 300, fire insurance policy covering the equipment 2,400. All right. The equipment is estimated to have a residual value of 10,000 after its end of six year life. The equipment depreciation used is straight line method. The company sold the equipment um, asset on the 30th of June 2018 for 25,000. All right, so first things first, required. Determine the acquisition cost of the factory equipment on the 1st of April 2015, showing your workings by identifying each element and the acquisition. So don't just tell me the last price, because if you get that wrong, it means I can't give you marks along the way. So let's have a look. First things first, we're going to include that as a um, capital cost. So we're looking at what are the capital costs of this equipment. The next thing is freight. Now freight is a, an item which is getting the uh, asset ready for use. So that means we'll include our freight. We've got $2,250 worth of installation and wiring. So if we're installing equipment or wiring it up, that's making it ready for use. So that's a good one. Uh, we've got materials and labour costs in testing the equipment, 750. Uh, now that's going to be included because that's once again getting it ready for use, making sure that no one turns it on and um, gets electrocuted. Uh, oils and lubricants for the supply uh, to be used in the equipment. Well, this is considered to be an ongoing cost, so I'm not going to include that one in the cost of the equipment. And the last one, the fire insurance policy covering the equipment. Now, fire insurance is an ongoing cost, so we're not going to include that one either. So we're only including those one-off costs that are getting the equipment ready for use. So what do we got? C1. Uh, so what's my, my acquisition cost was 75000 75000 uh, freight of a thousand. Uh, installation and wiring two two five A. Oh. And what are we? Uh, materials and labour costs and testing and equipment seven fifty. All right. Now, if we add all that up, seventy five, seventy six. Uh, 78, 79,000. Now, that part of the question is worth two marks. So one, two, three, four, all half marks. Now, if you just gave me that and you happen to add it up wrong, there goes two marks. So make sure you're, you're listed out. All right, next part is part two. Calculate the depreciation for 2015 and 2016, assuming the financial year ends on the 30th of June. Now, remember I said dates are important. Okay, when did we acquire the equipment? On the 1st of April 2015. Okay, so 1st of April 2015 is when we acquire. So we've got April, May, June. So we've got three months worth of depreciation in 2015 and 12 months of um, depreciation in 2016. So first things first, we need to calculate depreciation. Now this is where this number comes in, because this is my cost, and we're calculating depreciation using the straight line method. So straight line method equals my cost minus my residual divided by my life. Oh, my pen's gone. Yeah. So cost divided by residual, cost minus residual divided by life. Now my cost we know is 79,000. Minus my residual value, now it tells me my residual value is here at $10,000. And my useful life, it's six years. Uh, so we've got to divide by six, and that equals 69,000 divided by six will give me, hang on, brain's a bit soft this morning, I'll consult the calculator. Uh, uh, 
11,500. Now that's per annum, so that's per year. So in 2015, know how many months we have? We bought it in April and we're doing it for a 30 June deadline. So it's 3 twelfths. April, May, June, yeah, 3 twelfths times 11,500. Get my calculator back to help me with that. Times 0.25, which is 3 divided by 12 is equals 2,875. And then in 2016, I got 12 twelfths times 11, which equals 11,500. Now I just do 12 twelfths just because I'm working it out. So that makes my depreciation that for those two years. Does that, is that answering, assuming the financial, yep. So that answers that question there. So I've got those two. Now it says to record the journal entry to show the disposal of the asset on the 30th of June 2018. Okay, so this is three. So I've got depreciation for 2015, 2016, it'll be 2017 and 2018. So I'll have four depreciation periods. So what have we got? Uh, cost. Now record the journal entry to dispose of the asset. Okay, let's record the journal entry to dispose of the asset. Uh, what have we got? We've got uh, uh, 16, 17, 18, that's times 3. So I've got 2015 um, equals 2875 and then from 2016 to 2018 equals 3 times 16, 17, 18, yep, uh, 11,500. So my depreciation should be uh, 3,500 equals 34,500 plus 2875 equals 37,000. So that's my depreciation. So my cost, okay, so there's my depreciation for the full three periods. Now I'm going to um, get rid of my asset. So it says to, what does it say to do? Record the journal entry. Okay, so my journal entry first things first. Uh, and my debit column and my credit column. Okay, so first things first, I'm going to get rid of that accumulated depreciation. Which is 37,375. How much did I receive for this asset? Uh, the company sold the equipment for 25,000. So cash, 25,000. Uh, the capital cost was 79000 so I'm going to take that out of my ledger. Equipment. And that'll be a credit. And so. So plus 25 equals that. Minus 79. 16000 16,625. So my written down value, hang on, I've done that the wrong way. Let me try that again. 79,000 minus 37,375 equals 41,625. Okay, so therefore I'm making a loss on my sale of 25. Uh, 16,625. So that gives me my journal, so my disposal and sale. Now the way I did that was I just made sure my journal balance, so if I add this side up I get 79,000, add this side up I get 79,000 as well. And my journal must balance, so therefore I've obviously made a sale. If I was on the credit side here I would be making a gain on the sale.